Now let's look at the Nyquist criterion itself and how we use that to determine the stability of a closed loop system. So if you remember from a previous video which you should have watched, this basic equation can be rewritten in terms of the new denominator and numerator terms of terms G and H and we found that the numerator, so the zeros here, relate to the closed loop poles of the system and the denominator, the poles of this system, relate to the open loop poles of the system before it goes into closed loop, so open loop. We also know from contour mapping that there's a relationship between the number of, of encircled poles or zeros and the encirclements around the origin. So, if we want to relate this to stability, we know that stability has to do with all the poles being on the left side, left half plane. We want the closed loop poles to be on the left half plane, and we want to be able to check that. What we're going to do is we're going to use contours, and we're going to encircle actually the right half plane. We know that if some, a pole is in the right half plane, it will be unstable. So what we're going to do is we're going to encircle the right half plane, and you're going to go up this way. We're going to go out into infinity, which is a little bit weird. We're going to all go out to infinity, come around the, the right half plane, and come back from negative infinity over here. This concept is a little weird because you're going all the way out into infinity, which you can't actually draw. You can also think about it as no matter how large the system is, there are going to be finite poles. So you can draw your circle greater than where those poles exist. All right. Let's look at what these points are. So this region is on the imaginary axis. So this is j omega, right? And omega here is going from 0, I'm going to put positive, 0 to positive infinity in the positive direction. Then we are staying out in infinity and we're coming all the way around, and we come back this way. We're also going to draw in this direction. So we're doing a, a clockwise contour. Come all the way around to negative infinity, and then come back up this way on the imaginary plane. So here we have negative j infinity, and this time omega goes from negative infinity to zero. All right, so Looking at these two regions, we can now map our contour, we define our contour, and now we can take this contour and put it into our function here. And from there, we will get some sort of mapping out here that encircles the origin some number of times. And it will depend if we have the, num the number of poles or zeros in our system. So say we have some poles, zeros, and we have, let's say, three poles. Our system on the output is going to encircle our origin, and it'll be going in the kind of clockwise direction. This is just an example. Okay. This, from this, we can determine the stability. We can say, okay, we can look at the number of encirclements around here. From that, we can find the relationship between the closed loop and open loop poles. But if we want to do that, we have to figure out what this equation is. We have to put j omega into all of these and calculate the output, the contour. It's very uh, intensive in terms of calculation. Instead, we want to relate this equation to something that we're already familiar with. In this case, we're going to look at the frequency response. So if we look back over here, these are equivalent expressions, as you remember. We have this thing, j, j, sorry, g, h, this function, plus 1. Our input to our function, one of it is j omega. So we're putting s, one of our s's in here, it's going to be s equals j omega, as omega goes from 0 to infinity. If you remember already, that's the same as the frequency response. So we can plot that as a Bode plot, or we can draw it on a contour here. So this is actually something that's already familiar. So we can input 
this into that, we'll get this, it's equivalent to this region, and it's essentially the frequency response. But we also have this one here. This one is not a function of s. So putting an s here doesn't affect it. All this does is shifts over our function by one. So on this side, if we were looking at the encirclements around the origin, then essentially this is equ this equivalent, except that we're going to be shifted by one. So here we're encircling zero. Here we have plus one. So this one will actually be encircling negative one. So here we want to look at the encirclements of negative one rather than one, because we'll add one, and that will be equivalent to encircling the origin. So what we can do, instead of calculating everything from here, is we can use the frequency response, and we can plot it just like normal, put in our frequency response here. We will get maybe some sort of function, maybe it looks like this out, looks like this, something like that. This is equivalent to this input. So this would be our function of j omega on the positive region, frequency response. We also have this negative region. We also need to plot that. Luckily, it's going to be exactly the same, only mirrored across the imaginary axis. So we're going to look like this. This is also a contour, so we have the direction. Let's say, for example, this one goes like this. So we have our contour going around like that. This point is going to be infinity. So this point here is actually all of this here. Because everything's infinity, in this case, this would all be just at zero. OK. So to determine the relationship between the closed loop and open, closed and open loop poles, we would have to look at the encirclements of this. This directly is the Bode plot here. Instead of around the origin, it's around negative 1. Okay, so in the circlements around negative one, we can look at that number, and that will relate the closed loop and open loop poles. Based on this development, where we have encircled the right half planes, and we use this equation relating the closed loop and open loop, we can relate the number of circlements around negative one when we draw the Bode plot in the S plane, the encirclements around negative one because of this positive one here. We can actually simplify it to a very non-scary equation. So we have n. n here is the number of clockwise encirclements around negative 1. This is on our output. This is called the Nyquist diagram here. So the insert, that's the encirclements around negative 1. In this case, we'd have 0. z, if we look back at this equation, z is our zeros. So our zeros here are equivalent to the closed loop poles. And we've encircled the right half plane, so it's the closed loop poles in the right half plane. That is our z here. So closed loop poles in the right half plane. Okay, that's this expression here, is relates here. Then the poles of this equation relate to the open loop poles, and we are encircling the right half plane. So here we're looking at the open loop poles in the right half plane. So from this basic equation, if we know two of these, we can calculate the third one. So when we use this in practice, we generally will know the open loop characteristics. So we need the open loop poles in the right half plane. That's P. And we can draw the Nyquist diagram based on the open loop characteristics. We draw the Bode plot. We plot it here. Uh, and it'll be both the positive and the negative, j omega. And then we can count the encirclements around negative 1 in the clockwise direction. And we put that here to determine uh, n and p. And then we can solve for z. So if we want to rewrite this, we can rewrite this as just z equals n plus p. So these two equations, this is the simple equation when it comes out in the end. One important thing I'll note before I end is that this notation is using clockwise encirclements of negative 1. 
some books and resources will use counterclockwise encirclements of negative one. If you do that, you would make this a negative and you'd flip, flip the polarity. These two would flip n would equal to p minus c. So in this case, we're looking at clockwise. If it's counterclockwise, this equation will change slightly. So just be conscious of that. Okay. So if we know the open loop poles in the right half plane, we can draw this diagram and count the encirclements. Then we can figure about out the number of closed loop poles in the right half plane and determine if our system is stable. Of course, we want the number of closed loop poles in the right half plane, the z, we want that to be zero. That is our goal for stability.